Hello, this is me again. Braid rag is coding, um, which is not well. It's coding, but not not right now at the moment. Um, this is one of those uh, one-off uh, videos. Uh, I said I would do every now and then uh, when I have something interesting I want to talk about or show or whatever. Or maybe you know, it could be a coding session, but it's not the case for today. What I want to talk about today is about a new project uh, that I released um, last week, uh, which is called uh, Ubox MSX Lib, which um, there's a little bit of this leading name because Ubox is basically um, the main uh, component, but in reality, it's a set of libraries and tools uh, that I put together. So it's easier to make games uh, using the C programming language, uh, make games for the MSX. Um, so how this happened, why did I release this or why I spent time doing this? Well, um, as you may know, uh, in 2019, I released uh, two games uh, for the MSX. Uh, let's take a look at them. I released two games for the MSX. Uh, let me see. I'm not used to to show the browser in here. Let's see if I can manage to do it. All right. So I released two games. Uh, one of them was Night Night, a uh, single screen uh, platformer. And the other one was uh, Uchus and Gamma, which is a scrolling shooter. Um, and when, when I was building those those uh, games while well, especially with uh night night uh the first thing i did was uh just learn a new platform because i didn't know anything about programming for the msx um, i found the documentation was nice and i started working on it and quite naturally without me thinking too much about it um i started building uh a library uh which is the ubox msx li li library um, there is basically a thing wrapper around a uh, functionality you have in the BIOS. Um, you know, because the MSS comes with a very nice BIOS and it has a lot of, you know, it's not, it's quite easy to use. It's just that um, you want to, if you want to use that uh, from C, well, you might put things differently. So it's easy to use or nicer or more convenient. And when I realized you know, when, when I finished the two games, I realized that, well, I mean, this doesn't look too bad. I mean, uh, um, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's nice. I mean, it was nice for me. I would make more games with this library. <laughs> um, and, I, and because I know people that, you know, they would, they would like to make a game uh, for the MSX uh, because, you know, it was the system they had when they were uh, children and maybe they don't have the time or the skills to use assembler. Uh, so maybe C is a little bit more accessible, but in order to get um, the C compiler and the tools and everything together, so you can actually spend time making the game, you know, there is a learning curve. Um, so I thought, well, I mean, if you know enough, uh, you probably don't want to use C, uh, you might want to use assembler, or maybe you don't have time to use assembler uh, and you want to use C, but you don't have the time to actually deal with the libraries and set up everything. Um, I thought it would be interesting to release that. Um, and that was uh, Christmas uh, 2019. <laughs> um, and now, yeah, I released this in Christmas 2020. So what happened? Well, it happened that um, releasing something like this uh, the proper way, uh, it takes a lot of time because I mean, uh, let's take a look to documentation. Uh, so it's not just making a package and putting things together, you know. So you need to you need to write this. You need to write documentation. So you have. I mean, so the point is that this is used, right? Um, so. I just wanted to do it properly, and so I had to write documentation. 
And when I wrote the documentation, then I got distracted and I released two games for the CPC. And then I went back to these and I finally finished that. Uh, I made a example game that was one of the blockers because I, I, I wanted to release a library with uh, something you can look at and play with and, you know, it's not just using the library. So, so because making a game for an 8B system in C is not just making a, a game in C. Some things uh, you have to do them differently because the resources you have. Uh, so I wanted to show an example. And yeah, I've, at the end, I managed to do it. Um, so what is this video about? This video is going to be about, I'm going to explain a little bit, you know, provide a very high level overview of, of what is this. Uh, and this is a project, um, this is a project uh, URL, usebox.net, jjm slash usebox m6 slash live. And there is a GitHub repo where is all the you can find all the open source code uh, and you click on releases if you don't want to use git you can download a C for that or that or a tarball and you can compress that and you're ready to go um, and um, and I think the most important bit is probably the documentation you can build the documentation yourself but you you need more requirements and you know I mean I try to make this portable but in reality I use Linux and yes, I mean, I would like to help people to get this working on Windows or, or in Mac OS, but I don't have those systems to try it. And to be honest, this is going to be a, a best uh, effort um, kind of uh, support. So if you have problems, just let me know. You can open a book report here in GitHub. You have account and you know, I will give you some help eventually. Uh, but I guess most of it should work. Um, I have already some questions in msx.org. Uh, Someone tried to make this, this running in Windows. It has some problems. I, be ch I have changed a few things. Um, I wrote some Python tools to kind of remove a bit this dependency of having a POSIS environment. So basically, you don't have to install a lot of tools that I have available in, in Linux or people in Mac are likely to have available, but they are not available in a base install of Windows. So trying to make things easier, but still, you know, there might be some rough edges on, on those platforms because it's not what I'm using and it's not what I'm testing. Um, right, so currently uh, this uh, has three major components and there's a fourth one because I will talk about that in a bit. So I have three major components. First one is uh, the main, the core library, which is a uh, U-Box. That is basically what I said. It's a thin wrapper around the BIOS. Um, uh, I think I might be using hardware directly in some bits, but it's mostly the BIOS, which means that, you know, you're going to have some limitations, but on the other hand, it's going to be very compatible. And the code of those, is, some of these functions is extremely simple. And okay, let's take a look at something, at some of them, for example. Uh, so, uh, for example, enable a screen. <laughs> look at that, it's just a jump. So I just get, it's getting you an interface to use thing to, to use this from C uh, uh, in a very easy way, uh, but it's really is the bias doing the work. Um, so yeah, one of the components is this library. Um, um, also, I wanted to have some some okay. So I don't I didn't mean to support everything. So this is mostly for MSX one. Um, it is ideally targeting 32K uh, ROM games, uh, although I might easily add support for 48K, but it, you know, let's just start simple. If, if you want to do more, I mean, if you really need 48K or, you know, use the hardware directly, then you probably don't need this library because 
you know what you're doing, right? So, um, and, and I wanted to have some limits on what I want to support. So make it smaller and more focused. And so basically, uh, for example, looking at screen, I'm focusing on a screen too. Uh, and I'm focusing on MSX one. So yeah, I mean, and that's what it is. And it's fine. It may, it may not be the library you want or what you need. If you want to use hardware directly or you want to um, write something for MSX two or using a different graphical, you know, different screen mode, that's fine. Just don't use it. You know, there are other projects and you're probably not going to get the best of this one. Uh, because it's not basically what you need. Um, then, well, Ubox has uh, different groups, uh, have support for tile functions, sprite functions, uh, a screen and communication with the VDP, with the video uh, display processor, I think it is, what, what it's called. Um, then functionality for handle interrupts and the clock, so you can measure time and some control functions with some abstractions. For example, I have a Ubox read control that will give you uh, as return a byte where that you can use this, these different values in a mask. And basically, if you call it with cursor, it will give you the same results, but you're controlling the game with the cursor and the same for just in port one, just in port two. Um, um, so it's a nice abst abstraction. Um, so basically, you always call Ubox real control, and then in control you have the value of the control that the user wants to use, and that's it. Um, but I think which I think is nice. Uh, it has also where you can read the keyboard in case you want to do more things. Uh, Pretty basic. Uh, in interrupts, it's more or less the same. Uh, you can. So basically, this what it does is um, the library provides an in interrupt handler. Um, and that interrupt handler is going to measure time for you. Uh, so there is a parameter here called a, a weight ticks. There is basically a divider that allows you to. So basically, um, your game is going to do things and you're going to update uh, the game status and the screen uh, some frequency. Um, so if you are doing things, you may not have time to do 50 frames in PAL and 60 frames in NTSC. So with this divider, you can say, for example, a common value, which is three, and just do the updates at uh, 16 frames or 20 frames, depending on the system. Um, so when you init the, the internal handler with weight ticks, you basically provide that divider. And then later on, when you call Ubox weight, it's controlling the time. So it's measuring the time for you. For example, have, we have an example here. It's telling you, okay, can we do 50 frames per second or 30 frames in, in a NTSC? So you provide the divider, which is two. Then this is your game loop. You update the controls, you update the entities, draw the entities, and then this Ubox weight, what it's going to do is going to ensure that your game is fixed at 25 frames per second in PAL and 30 frames per second in NTSC. So your game is going to be con constant. If this block here takes more than that time, there will be a slowdown, but if it's faster, your game is not going to move at a different speed, so it's not going to move faster and then slower if you are busy doing other things. So this is important to actually make sure that your game works smooth. And also you can set your own internal handler on top of that in here. So you can do other things and it's going to save the registers for you. So you need to worry about anything. You can just do this and it, it will be called uh, every time there is a VSync. Um, then the screen and BDP, that's clear enough for the sprites. So this is the core library. And with this alone, you can already make a game. Uh, then there's another component that is the sprite and pattern manager, SPMAN, that 
Well, it's very simple and it's very inefficient because it's completely written in C. But it has the benefits that it's only around 500 lines, which is quite small, I think. Um, and then if you want to customize that and change that, uh, you can change it easier than if it's a chunk of assembler. Now, what is this doing is, well, it's again, it's very focused on, on the type of grain I want to make with this type of library. It supports 16 per 16 sprites. Um, it allows you to manage sprite patterns. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, well, it, it, it allows you to allocate patterns in the BTP and dynamically in a way that is, is easy to, to handle. Um, it's probably over engineered, but when I finished it, I thought, oh, this is so, so nice to use, so easy to use. And basically I could be programming this in a, you know, for a modern platform PC and it would look pretty much the same. Um, anyway, so, and on top of that, it has something that is quite important in MSX, uh, which is having a routine that does uh, flicker for you. Because as you know, um, if you display more than four sprites in the same line, the, the, uh, after the, those four sprites, the fifth one and, and so forth, they are not going to be displayed. Um, so SPMAN, what it does is allows you to uh, flicker. So you still showing only four sprites, but showing different splites, you still show something, although it's flickering. And as part of that, it supports uh, sprites that are fixed and never flicker. For example, you don't want the player, the player sprite to flicker. So that's, that's nice functionality that it has to have. And while well, it explains here how to use it, and it's quite easy to use and, and it works. And the third component that you probably want to use if you want, want to make a game is uh, some way of playing sound effects and music. So uh, for this, I'm using the amazing Arcos uh, 2. Um, Arcos 2 is uh, it's a project by Julien Nebo. Uh, sorry, he's French. I'm not going to pronounce his name uh, properly, but he's tracker and player are the best you can have, I think. I mean, in my opinion, I could be wrong, of course, but I, this is the one I like. Um, the only thing is that, um, well, I'm using, it, it, um, Arcos uh, has a tracker, which is the, the software you use to, to write the music. And then there are a few different players in Assembler that you can use in MSX. So I'm using the minimal player that ha supports running from ROM with a, using a tiny amount of memory. I think it uses uh, 222 bytes in total. So that's pretty nice. And the only, I guess, difficult bit with Arcos is that because the, 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 the player is so advanced, uh, it has to be assembled with a specific assembler. And anyway, it's not a problem with that assembler. The problem is that SDCC has an assembler that is not amazing, it's not very good. And the main reason probably is because it generates an intermediate object that is relocatable, so it can be linked. So basically, SDC is part of a C compiler, which is different than the stuff you can get when you are just doing assembler. Let's leave it at that. So basically, the problem with that is that, you know, it's a little bit cumbersome, it's a little bit difficult to integrate with SDC, and I have done that for you, so you don't need to worry about, you know, it has some instructions. We might need a tool called this arc um, to actually compile, but at the end, uh, mplayer is an interface, and what, we got, what you get at the end is it generates the specific uh, configuration for your song and your effects, and at the end you build a, a, a player that is exactly what your game needs, which means that it's going to use the exact amount of CPU and memory you need to use, not more. So functionality that you don't use in the player is not going to be included in your, in your game, which I think is great. Um, and basically, yeah, this is a common interface, very easy to use. Uh, and, um, and that's it. 
And finally, we have some extra li libraries that is not a component, but you know, I thought, for example, this is something I released recently, like two days ago, which is adding a library to support a AP li li lib compression. Um, and I have included a AP Ultra, in, which is an optimal compressor. Amazing stuff. This is a very good piece of software by Emmanuel Marti and the French guy. It's really, really good. I mean, I recommend I recommend this compressor if you don't you don't know about it. Uh, and see, I mean, the example games <laughs> is listing some of my games. Uh, Brit Rick and Kisuna Scores. Those are the two games I released uh, for the CPC last year. So I think it's really good. Um, I have I have used over the over the years different compressors and and the compressors and I think this is hits the sweet spot between uh, speed, uh, the compressing, uh, the quality of the compression is, is is very good. It compresses a lot, and yeah, it's easy to use. You have it here. You don't need to do anything really. Just include the header, include the library, and there's a function here that you can use straight away. So this is the basic stuff. Um, there is also, I have included with uh, the project uh, game, which is, uh, I have the structure here. The game is called green, nothing, <laughs> nothing too exciting, um, but still I try to to show something like, um, you know, it could be just a, a, a silly demo, but I wanted to show something like it's almost a finished game, although it has only one screen, but it's already using uh, it's already using some uh, advanced stuff. Well, advanced, I don't know. It's it's kind of the stuff I use in all in all my games, uh, but looking at here, it's using. Uh, it's using a map uh, that is designed with a tile and it is using everything really, all the components. So let's take a look to, for example, yeah, the data is using. So basically is generating the tiles from a PNG, uh, sprites from PNG files as well all on the fly with uh, using tools included with the with the package and see it's also processing the JSON map from tile compressing with AP leaf I, I don't know this I mean it could be let's take a look at the game it could be oh and also okay so I will the libraries so the the tools already but not the libraries so um, I mean, you could be having your AP Ultra and the tools you need to compile and, and build the game already in your system, and you don't need to build them. But if you get this from scratch and you run make, it should build everything if you have the requirements and you're, you're done. Um, but look at this. I mean, just do make game and it's done. It doesn't take long, is it? Does it? Um, uh, it has some, some. I mean, it's using all the usual tools I use to make games uh, for the MSX. So it's telling you the amount of ROM we're using. It's using 11K, which may sound a lot. But for example, I'm not compressing the tile set because why bother in, in a such small example? Uh, and, and, and RAM in total is using, uh, it's, it's, it's using a little bit because I'm using a buffer for the map and stuff, but I mean, the engine is pretty much done. I guess up to 32K of ROM, <laughs> that's quite a lot. And it's using 1.2K of RAM. Uh, so this could be working just fine in at eight kilobytes uh, of RAM MSX anyway. So, um, oh no, I just, I think I just move everything around. Let's see if I can put it back more or less. Uh, 
okay, more or less. Do more. Yeah, that's fine. Right. So let's just start again. So MSX and then game ROM. I mean, the game is not. I mean, it's a little bit more of you know of a basic, basic, basic. You know, it has all the components. It has a menu. Um, if I press fire with the joystick, uh, we will use the joystick. If I press a space, it will use uh, the cursor. Has a menu. Has sound. Has music. Uh, I'm moving the green guy here on the on the top of the screen. It has enemies. Uh, can collect items when I press fire I use the elevator you can see the flicker in action so the three sprites of the enemies are flickering but not the two sprites of the, of the player there's two sprites uh, green and, and white it wraps around the screen I don't know I mean it was something I that I it's something I put together in, in what, three days during Christmas. That's enough. Yeah, some people were saying on Twitter, well, it looks fun. Well, I mean, there is not much of a game. And, you know, game over screen with music. I mean, it has all the components, right? It's a full game. And you have the source code to look at. Here is uh, the function to draw the menu. Let's go to main. So, see, we call this this uh, Ubox init ESR. Uh, by the way, if you look at the include files, uh, the documentation is generated for the include files. So, if we look for in it, so let's go there. Okay, so this is the code in the ESR. So ESR. Okay, so I mean the documentation is here. You don't really need to read the documentation, but right, it is there. It's in the website, and you can build it locally if you want. Uh, so yeah, so twenty five frames per second in PAL, 30 frames per second in NTSC uh, mode 2, you know, it's, it's quite straightforward it's nothing... I put a lot of comments uh, well, I mean, some of them are required because this is kind of a magic number and, you know, that's what it does there's nothing else you can, I can explain here, I mean but, you know, uh, see, for example, I set my own uh, interval handler but because we don't do anything in, in on it, it's just updating the music. I just call the same, I set the function of M player that is actually updating the PSG and the music and the effects. So yeah, that's it. That's how you have background music and sound effects. Very easy. Um, draw the menu and draw the menu. Oh, it's not working this one. Okay. What broke? Okay, let's try again. Okay, it works now. Uh, right, so we draw the menu and and play in effects. Oh, I didn't explain this. This is quite interesting. Uh, so M player play effects P. Right. So this is something I built on top of Arcos. So in Arcos you can play effects and music and you can use three channels all three channels of the PSG if you want uh, for for music uh, but what I suggest that you should be doing or you could be doing is uh, have two channels for music that's what the game is doing and one channel for effects but then if you have one channel for effects uh, you probably want to have some sort of management of those effects uh, and what is this providing is uh, a priority base priority base uh, sound effects in one channel so basically 
you in it you in it arcos uh saying well this is the table of sound effects here and you might have you know 10 sound effects whatever and then when you call play sound effect you provide the number of the sound effect well this function what it's doing is it's, a, it's using priority basically um when you play an effect the effect is played if no effect is already being played played basically you know the channel is free or if the effect being played has less priority so basically um if you are playing uh, i don't know let's take a look to the uh, to the effects we have here over here okay so we have no effect just not playing anything start battery elevator hit and that so basically um if you are well in this case you are not going to have a battery to pick up in the same place that you have you know an elevator but if you use an elevator and you are hit by an enemy that sound is more important so i want to interrupt the effect of the elevator right so i want the player to know that it's been hit and the same with that so maybe this is not the best example because it's very simple but you know you have a lot of effects happening you want the most noisy effects to interrupt the less noisy for example an explosion should interrupt and play completely on over a gun for example because it's more noisy anyway so let's go back to what we're looking at. Uh, so yeah, it has effects with priority, which I think is basic, but you probably want to have that in your game. And and here in the source code of the game itself, um, you have everything really. So init variables, set of the map, uh, the map data is compressed, but we have to uh, uncompress the map data because uh, we use tiles for for the um, for the batteries for the pickups so you need to change the map basically uh, and for that we need a copy and the map is oh sorry I left the browser open and you're not seeing anything all right so and the map is uh, the map is no, I think that's in game. If I can do it. All right. So the map is 32 per 21, so it's 700 something, which is quite a big buffer. But it's okay. I mean, it's, we're using 1.2k. Uh, we have more than enough. Anyway, it's compressed. Then we need the map entities, and the map entities is reading from the format of the my map importer that is included as well with documentation and everything. So you can use that if you want. And basically, it's using uh, SPMAN to allocate the patterns. And I'm tracking an array of entities. And the entity zero is always going to be the player, so we can find him uh, to check uh, impacts and stuff. And it's pretty simple, really. Uh, the main update loop is basically going through the array. Uh, I, I, I used uh, a more, a way more complicated approach in the past using uh, a linked list uh, that has the nice property of uh, being very. Uh, the time is constant when you are adding elements to the list. Um, but in this case, I mean, max entities is 11. Uh, and we can see moving seven enemies on the demo. And I guess we can have more and it should be fine. Let's, let's try that. Let's try that. So, uh, this is now what we want to watch. Let's open. Do, 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 do. Let's open. Oh, you are not watching it actually. Give me a sec and I will show you the map. 
Oh no, you're looking at it. Okay, cool. Excellent. So let's make more entities to see how many is that we can handle. <laughs> so duplicate. Oh yeah. Okay, so we have eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's not too much. Let's remove seven. Okay. Is that no, we need to remove one more. All right, let's try that. So let's hide this and the wheel and take a look. I mean, it's fine. I guess we could add more. I don't think there is any slowdown. Looks good to me. That was something like a change of the speed in there, but I think it's probably the emulator, the capture with the emulator anyway. So yeah, um, pretty much everything you want to do with the game. Uh, 11 entities, speed more than enough, it's just an array. <laughs> I guess you were finding things and creating elements dynamically and you need to find a gap it might be a little bit slower but i think it's probably okay so i'm not sure what i was bothering with the list to be honest but anyway let's take a look for example uh a quick look how long are we talking already okay we still have time let's take a look to the player for example so the player is this piece of code uh, and basically the way the sp sprite manager works is that um, when you call here spman update it updates all the sprites on the screen uh, and it flushes anything well oh man I need to explain this it's, it's a lot of to things to explain but basically it works similar to what you will do in a modern uh, platform for example let's take a look at the enemy so every frame that you update what you do is you allocate an sprite and that is going to tell spman that there is a sprite he has to draw update on a screen when you call spman update and after that it's going to flush that so at the next update we need to allocate the sprite again uh, which is a very quick operation and the allocate sprite is the equivalent of uploading things to the bdp the only difference is that in order to manage uh, in order to manage the, the flicker uh, we need to kind of uh, queue all those operations like say uh, okay so this is the list of this is allocating a regular sprite and in the case of the player we're going to allocate two fixed sprites that are never going to flicker so spman collects all those operations and when you're ready to run update, it will perform that, upload that to the PDP and it will be visible on the screen. While you are performing this allocation and all of the stuff, the, the, the things that you have on the screen don't change. So the, you, the player is still watching the previous frame, but because we are updating every 25 frames or 30 frames, you have quite a lot of time to actually update the game state and update those, those sprites. But it's, the only th thing is that you don't update the sprites. You ask for a new set. Oh, so every time I run, I need to allocate the sprite. If in one event, I don't allocate the sprite, for example, the player. Uh, for example, when you are invulnerable, uh, we want the sprite, the player sprites to blink. How do you make it blink? Well, there is a counter that is invulnerable. And if the, fir the first uh, bit is set uh, to one, we return here so we don't allocate the sprite, meaning that we are not going to draw that sprite and it's going to blink because this uh, this counter is going to decrement until it's zero. So when you are hit, let's look at uh, the enemy. So the enemy hits you 
uh, and it's going to set your invulnerability counter to 64 frames, which is not real frames, remember. We, it's, it's, this is a number in our weight, which is using a divider. So it's in reality 128 frames, uh, you know, on, on the MSX. And basically, uh, I think it's quite nice and easy to use. And as you can see, it scales okay. You can have a lot of stuff and, you know, in in a choosing gamma, for example, I have a huge amount of stuff in the screen and there's no slowdown whatsoever. Uh, I guess that's hardware sprites for you. And yeah, you have all the functionality here uh, with collisions and everything. So maybe depending on your project, you may not do, want to do things the way I did it here. Uh, but in general, I think it's not a bad example of a game uh, for an AB system um, and I think this is pretty much everything I want to talk about um, of course it's open source uh, well of course not of course but in this case it's open source and um, uh, the licenses um, MAT, which is basically very permissive. The only thing you need to do is one well, is explained here. Uh, is preserve copyright and li license not notices. Uh, you don't even have a re legal requirement to say that you've been to use this code, but I mean that would be nice. But you don't have to do it. Um, we include. I include some uh, tools uh, like Rasm to compile Arcos, x 2 bin and all these are open source. And then there's a set of um, Python tools to help you do things like this silly tool to tell you how much uh, data and ROM uh, do you have left. Uh, it will show you a warning if you go over the data or uh, the ROM, um, the, the map, map processor uh, importer or whatever I think this is the first time I released this tool um, because the the tools to process the PNG to have space and tiles I have released that it's a different library in the past uh, but you have it you have them there here uh, which is I mean it's just to make things easier in reality what you can do with this is you can download this you can get to the game and you can even, you know, duplicate the directory and start working with this as a as a template, as a starting point. Maybe um, I, I'm going to do that. I can tell you because if I make another game for the MSX one, this is pretty much uh, the the tools and the libraries I was using. It's just that it's now cleaner and kind of process for for other people to consume. And uh, yeah. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, from, of me introducing uh, the library. Um, I mean, you might find the library useful. You might want to use it. You might not. Maybe just reading it, you might learn stuff. Uh, the same way I have learned things by reading, uh, you know, source or open source or other tools that other people have re have released. Um, you want to start writing games in C for the MSX. Maybe this is the library you're looking for. There are other projects, bigger projects. Um, Fusion, Fusion C, for example, is one of them. Although it's a bigger scope than this one, uh, which is maybe that's what you need. Uh, and there's another one, I just forgot the name. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of open source, there are a lot of tools, uh, which is great. Means, you know, you can have fun, make games and more games for the MSX, which is something everybody likes right okay so that's me uh for today i think i'm going to wrap up now it's been 45 minutes and um yeah may see you next time uh i think i'm going to continue doing doing it like this uh, although the experiment of doing the coding itself is gone is finished and I'm, I, it's very unlikely i'm going to do more like those um, you know, one of like this, uh, which is more show and tell, or in this case, introducing a library, which is not me coding, really. Um, I think it might happen again.
Okay. Bye.